now yield to uh, Judge Poe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as far as I know, I've seen all the classified briefings that the State Department has shown us on the issue of the designation of the MEK. I've read everything that's come to our attention about the designation. I am not convinced that the MEK ought to stay on the foreign terrorist organization by the United States. Ambassador, you alluded to another classified briefing. Is there more information that this committee hasn't seen regarding why the MEK is still on the designation? Uh, is there recent information, or, uh, or is there just what are you what are you talking about that there's a, you'll furnish another classified briefing on the issue? Uh, my reference to a classified briefing was to uh, the chairman's question about the events of last April and the questions he raised in his letter to Secretary Clinton. It was not my offer was not with respect to the FTO issue. Okay, uh, I, I wanted to be clear on that because yes, sir, th there is no more information as far as you know. The State Department has furnished all that information to us either here or in classified briefings. Is, is that correct, sir? I'd be happy to take that question back, but they are they are looking at it actively now. So there is more information. I'd be happy to take that back. What does that mean? I'd be happy to take your question back and respond to you in writing. So you, you know, you won't tell me here in this hearing it, whether there is or is not more information that this committee hasn't received about the designation. What I can tell you is that they have been working on the package for some months, as you're aware, and I can't speak to every detail on what you might have been briefed on previously, but I'll be happy to take that back. Well, as far as I know, as far as information you have allowed us to see, uh, you haven't convinced you ha that the FTA, FTO designation should remain. That is the key to why we're having this problem. You, uh, we want to, these residents to be safe. They want to be able to get refugee status. They want to go to foreign countries, but foreign countries won't take them because the United States still labels them as FTOs, foreign terrorist organization. Now, my question to you, uh, Mr. Ambassador, as uh, Maliki told us, the reason he acts the way he does toward Camp Asheroff is because we, as the United States government, keep them on the FTO list. That's why he wouldn't let this committee go to Camp Asheroff. That's why he wants to have them relocated, because of our designation. That's what he says. That's what he tells us. So I would hope the State Department would reach a decision, as our European friends have, that they should be removed from the FTO list. And the delay, the delay, the delay costs lives. My question now is, April 11th, April of 2011, 36 folks in the um, Camp Asheroff were killed. Are we investigating that? Are we holding anybody accountable for that? Is the United States? We condemned the loss of life and the killings at Camp Ashraf. We have raised this repeatedly with the Iraqis. And it is out of concern for further violence that Secretary Clinton has asked me to take on this assignment. Um, with respect so are we holding anybody accountable? That's my question. Has anybody been held accountable? Has the Maliki government, the soldiers that came in using American equipment, has anybody to this date been held accountable? Or are we just talking about it? We have made very clear our deep unhappiness at, that, at those killings. Well, I'm the sure that the people, excuse me, I'm sure that the people whose family members have been are present and that they were killed in Camp Asheroff are glad that we are deeply concerned. My question is, has anybody in the Iraqi government or anybody anywhere been held accountable for the deaths of those people by our government? That's all my question. By is. our government? I'm not aware of it. We haven't. Um, the, the concern is the deadline. People, uh, December 31st, as uh, people on this committee have, have alluded to and have stated, uh, that's the day of reckoning. Do you think that they will, in the next 24 days, we will be able to assure some kind of agreement with the Maliki government? I very much hope so, and it is our intention to work with 
Ambassador Kobler, who's got the lead, uh, to, see, to support uh, the conclusion of such an agreement. That cannot happen if the UN is working only with the government of Iraq. The, the leaders at Ashraf, the people at Camp Ashraf, have to be a part of this process, and we encourage them to step forward and work so that there can be a mutually agreed um, arrangement rather than something that is unilateral. Unilateral doesn't work. Uh, it could end very badly. So we are pushing hard for exactly this. And it's our view that if the, either um, a, an agreement can be reached or enough progress can be made, that we could get the time we need to get that kind of agreement. The we in this case is the UN. They have the lead, but we're working actively. Mr. Rivera? Have we made it clear that at the December 31st deadline, and what the Iraqi government has announced, uh, I understand. that that is unacceptable to this government? It is the UN, I, I was saying earlier, but I'll repeat it. The um, Ambassador Kobler heading the efforts for the UN yesterday after a Security Council session devoted to this issue said that the deadline needs to be extended. So the deadline, was, the deadline needs to be extended. That means the deadline must be extended. That is our position, the position of the Obama administration of the United States government. That deadline must be extended. Is that correct? Uh, the, it is impossible to get everything done before the deadline. However, our ability to get an extension of the deadline, to convince the Iraqi government to extend the deadline, is going to, is going to depend on whether there's a serious process underway. And that's why we call on the leaders at Camp Ashraf to get into this process so that we have the best chance of a peaceful outcome, which is what we all seek. Yes. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, a question for uh, Ambassador uh, uh, Freed. Um, what, in your opinion, is the biggest uh, obstacle to uh, the State Department uh, lifting the, uh, uh, or delisting uh, uh, MEK as a uh, uh, terrorist organization? It's not a question of obstacles. It's a question of a review of the facts and the law in this case. Um, and that decision will be made by the secretary. The memo is in preparation. It will be and it's a long package of documents. It will be sent to her. She'll have to make that decision. That's all I can say at this time, sir. When did the uh, EU uh, delist uh, this organization, do you recall? Um, I would have to get... So it's been quite a while, uh, has it not? It was, over, it was over a year ago, I believe. Mm -hmm. Are there any different facts, do you think, that... We have our own data and we have our own legal standards. Um, we're, of course, aware of what the, you know, of what the EU has done, and um, it is obviously timely to review that. The uh, Clinton administration, the Bush administration, um, decided this one way. And this administration is looking at the issue now. If I may, I know we have to adjourn. Um, by the way, the absurdity of the listing of the, uh, as, as, of the MEK as a terrorist organization is shown by your testimony. On the one hand, we're treating them as terrorists. Now, you're, then you're saying, oh, but they have to engage. They have to sit at the table. They have to take a role. You're, you're treating them in a way that uh, says, oh, you're, yeah, they're legitimate parties here. Well, if they're legitimate parties, delist them. You can't, I don't know how, why you think you can have it both ways. You're calling someone terrorist and say, oh, please be engaged in this process, you terrorists. We don't trust you at the table because you're going to take out a gun or something and shoot us. But please sit there. Come on, that's absurd. And the whole thing of your being, you know, you're talking about urgency. I mean, all your stuff is on process. We can't promise timelines. Uh, I mean, you're presently now... If I understand it, your, your official position is uh, envoy about the closing of, uh, of Guantanamo. Is that your official title? Special envoy for gu closure of Guantanamo, yeah. yes, sir. Oh, good. I hope uh, we don't move as slow as we did on that one, on this case. Look, you got 25 days. We haven't closed it, right? We can get into the reason. We haven't closed it, have we? Open. No, sir. Okay, so two years from now, I hope you'll say, well, you know, we were trying to deal with Ashraf, but, you know, there were complexities there. Look, you've got 25 days. I don't hear from you the assurance that many of these people would like to hear, because they have relatives there, they have close friends there, that somehow 
the United States is going to take action that does not depend on all these other complexities. If you just recommend it today, I don't know, half a dozen troops stay there at Camp Ashraf. Or recommend today that the, the, the Security Council take this action. Or recommend today that the UN, uh, the UN uh, uh, take some specific action. You, 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 you're, you're not doing that. You keep talking about the complexities and the, and, the, and the timelines, and you can't comment on this, and there's this and that. Give us some assurance that you, what you just said, you think the situation is dire. I don't see any evidence that you think the situation is dire. It takes months for us to get a, a letter from the, the secretary on these issues. We tried to visit Camp Ashraf. They won't let us. Let's, uh, How do we know the situation is going? Time, I, would I, 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 I yield the that. Thank you. Ambassador, a chance to answer the question, and hopefully we'll give Ms. Jackson Lee a chance to ask a question. Yes, Mr. Ambassador, would you like to answer that? Um, hard to know where to begin, um, but we do regard the situation as. Um, serious and the word dire is appropriate. And do something today which shows that. What can you tell us today um, we are that the United States is going to do to Mr. protect Miller, those people? You want him to answer your question. Yeah, you but should. he just goes you on with this bureaucratic we baloney. we got uh, a couple minutes. Uh, Mr. Right. Ambassador, please, you've got 15 seconds. We're going to give Jackson Lee a, a, a minute, then we've got to run off and vote. The best way to resolve this peacefully is to work with the UN to get a negotiated solution quickly so, so that the people there can uh, leave the camp in safety and security. That's what we're aiming at and we are indeed working intensely every single day. Okay, Ms. Jackson Lee, would you have a, a question? Chairman, I have to take minute. a second to thank you and Mr. Carnahan. This is a miracle. To believe that we have a full hearing on Camp Ashraf is absolutely a miracle okay. and a tribute to the Iranian Americans that are sitting in this room. Uh, but let me just say, on April 8th, uh, the Iraqi army and police under uh, the command of uh, Mr. Malachi uh, attacked Camp Ashraf with ammunition and weapons, I believe, from the United States. At least 34 people were killed and eight women were killed. At the end of this month, uh, Mr. Malachi determines to close this. Ambassador Freed uh, and to Ms. Leaf, I thank you for your service. I have this question uh, for you immediately. Um, just what is the United States intending to do? I want you to cut off funds for Malachi. I want Malachi as he comes. I appreciate the sovereignty and I appreciate the dignity of his office, but I believe he should not have an Oval Office meeting with the President until he agrees before he walks into that Oval Office that he will not murder, kill, and maim the people in Camp Ashraf. He does not deserve a seat with our President if he is not going to agree before that meeting. What are you prepared to do to stop the bloodshed? Are our soldiers going to be there? Are you going to insist that uh, if there is an extension? What are you intending to do, if I may just have that answer? Message back and give us an answer. Will this president meet with Prime Minister Maliki even if he has not made an agreement uh, on this issue? Come to an understanding. Thank you, Chairman. Can I just ask him, will you have soldiers there? Will you, are you going to absolutely stop them from closing it? After many years and the expense of blood and treasure, our soldiers are leaving Iraq. We are working flat out to support arrangements for the safe and secure, humane relocation of the residents of Camp Ashraf. We are doing so on an urgent basis, very mindful of the calendar and the ticking clock. Uh, that is where our efforts are focused. Can you, can you, can you go to the address of Ms. Jackson Lee's original question? Is the President of the United States uh, going to be meeting with uh, Prime Minister Maliki even if he has not uh, reached an understanding on this issue? And uh, if you do not know the answer, will you take the, uh, that to the State Department and uh, let them know how concerned we are about it? I will, first, I will certainly take back the concern of this committee, absolutely, sir. Okay. And secondly, um, I will say that, uh, in my judgment, the best way to convey the gravity of the situation and the concerns of this committee is um, to have that meeting and go forward with okay. it. Okay. This hearing will be adjourned in one moment when I just leave the, the thought. Actions speak louder than words. If you're talking to somebody, he's going to understand that that's weakness rather than if you don't talk to him. Uh, and it's a that, human rights issue, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Got, Rankin. Thank you, Ms. Jackson Lee. This uh, part of the hearing is uh, uh, in recess until after the next vote.